Hi everybody. I am a tremendous fool. Uh, <laughs> I did an extra hour of the stream yesterday um, and I somehow managed to not um, realize throughout the entire hour that my microphone was muted. Um, so part five uh, which is not something that will happen often, of my stream yesterday. Uh, somehow managed to have none of my audio commentary, nothing that I said um, was actually captured. So what I'm doing today is um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a recording of the recording of for the part five of yesterday's stream and I'm going to just do a running commentary on it. Uh, I will not say all the same stuff that I said before but you may notice that the camera um, is positioned in the same spot here you know on this side of the the screen um, so it should perfectly overlap with where the camera was before and uh, everything should work out well and you don't have to worry about seeing my mouth not matching the words um, because it should all come out the same so anyway uh, now that the admission of my idiocy is out there uh, let's go ahead and jump into it um, so this was the last part of uh, helping the Grey Death Legion and uh, I wasn't really feeling comfortable about it. Things were, were really rough. Um, I had some damaged mechs. Uh, I had tired, um, tired pilots. And I wasn't sure about taking a 45 tonner into this next fight because I knew there was going to be a lot of opposition. But I also knew that I was going to be getting help from the Grey Death Legion. So there was some hesitation there on whether or not I actually wanted to go ahead and do this deployment, but I really kind of backed myself into a corner because it was all consecutive deployments and I didn't have a choice. Um, so I was really unsure about taking um, the Phoenix Hawk with its very low armor in comparison to everything else I was taking. <clears throat> but, um, I mean, I didn't really have any other choice. Uh, I needed to swap out to mechs that were in good workable condition, uh, not having time to pull back and repair really um, really put me in a, 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 an, un an uncomfortable position. So. And the load time on this one was really bad but uh, I had I'd read the book the name of which I cannot remember right now uh, that this is based this flashpoint is based on um, and it was well, at first it was it was a hell of a read it was great um, but it had been a while it's been, it's been a little it's been over been like a year and a half uh, not quite that long it's, it's been it's been over a year since I read it um, and a lot of other things have happened over the course of that time so I didn't remember everything but uh, yeah um, I didn't remember exactly how much assistance I was going to be or I should be expecting uh, rather from the Great Death Legion. I just knew that there were going to be Great Death Legion forces there. I also knew that there was going to be at least four, if not more, uh, enemy lances. Um, because in the previous mission, you got an option to go after a pa one pair out of three pairs, and then the other four lances would, would show up. Uh, so here we drop. Um, and long-range radar is showing Merrick forces out there 
uh, over the ice. Um, I will not be redoing the voice, the voicing of the uh, the dialogue here. Um, but yeah, so this is the command lands for the Great Death Legion. Um, I don't know why it's bringing my focus to over there. Um, but, uh, and then here's the Firelands. I, I thought it was only getting one lance, but I had forgotten that in the book of this battle, actually, there were two lances, um, that not everybody made it out of. Uh, not everybody made it out of this fight. Spoiler! Uh, <laughs> um, but we'll take a look here at, uh, what's in the two lances. Uh, once they get done moving. So you can see there, there's a Shadowhawk. There is a Shadowhawk in both lances. Uh, in the Command Lance, the Shadowhawk is piloted by Lori Kalmar. Um, so yeah, there's an Archer, um, a Crusader, and a Warhammer, as well as the Shadowhawk in the Fire Lance. And then we take a look at the uh, Command Lance. There's Grayson in the Marauder. And we've got the Rifleman, uh, Shadowhawk, and Wolverine. Um, and I talked a little bit about these. Um, the Rifleman, uh, Davis McCall. I was... He's such a fun read uh, in the book. So he's like... He's got an incredibly thick Scottish accent is what you're supposed to uh, imagine when you're reading uh, his, his dialogue. And if you can't understand a thick, thick Scottish accent, like a thick Scottish Highland accent, you won't be able to read... Uh, his dialogue it's it, I mean I understand those accents I can I can parse it and it was still a bit of a struggle for me at times like I had to read it out loud um, which when you're around other people that that'll get you some looks <laughs> um, and then uh, Delmar Clay there in the Wolverine um, they had some problems with uh, with Clay but yeah um, Lori Kalmar, who started off the series as an enemy, but was quickly recruited as an ally. Um, and then over in the Firelands, we got uh, Hassan Ali Khaled um, in the Warhammer. He is just awesome. Um, and we've got some other people uh, in the other mechs uh, as well. We've got Isuru Koga in the Archer. He's a uh, um, Draconis Combine um, expat and uh, I will comment on um, the uh, the color schemes here so the Great Death Legion they use um, red, gray, and black in their color schemes but if you look at everybody else and compare it to um, the Archer there Koga's Archer it's uh, it's way more prominent on the red uh, so you can see he still holds on to his uh, uh, his heritage with the Draconis Combine. Um, I mean, oh, even over here. So you've got you've got the Rifleman, um, which has got a lot of red on it, and you've got the Wolverine, which has got a lot of red on it. Um, but for the most part, everybody else is really heavily focused on the gray and the black. Um, so. And it makes sense, actually, when you look at the Marauder, it makes sense for it to have um, a decent amount of red on it because it used to be very red uh, because of where it came from. Uh, so that was that was a prize taken, I believe, in the second book in the series, which was previous to this. So we're gonna move down the uh, down the ridge line here, Copy that. and uh, try to find us something to shoot at. And there we go, first enemy contact on sensors over there. So the command lance is gonna have to deal with that. And I I really struggled with trying to figure out where I wanted to put the phoenix hawk. Like where do I want to take it? Um, I was initially of the mind that I was not gonna have it shoot at much of anything, and it was just gonna jump around a lot and do some scouting and maybe take some pot shots uh, when it could. Um, so, the beginning of this battle is slow. Um, 
there's a lot of reserving uh, that goes on, and there's a lot of what I consider unnecessary sensor locking that the AI does. Um, but it is what it is. So. And yeah, we have some actual uh, Free Worlds League uh, military and some militia uh, as well involved in this fight. So it's 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 um it's hectic. There's a lot going on, but we have a lot of forces. Um, again, not everybody's going to make it out of this um, unscathed, but uh, and any allied mechs that go down you don't get to know the fate of the pilots if you want to know what happened to the pilots read the book um, and this battle doesn't exactly play out the way it does in the book of course uh, it would be difficult and kind of unfair to script the battle exactly like it happens in the book um, but, uh, Commander. Yeah, so we're going to march our Battlemaster down uh, with all of its ridiculous weaponry. And we're going to get our first shots in. Get a shot with the uh, Star League Defense Force Extended Range Long Laser. Or large Laser. Why do I do that? Long Laser. No, Large Laser. It's not. So, they've sent up a wasp as a forward scout, which is not a bad idea. And we're just plugging away at it. Already exposed its leg. See, that that was unnecessary. The target is lit up, and that was an archer. He could have just opened up with the LRMs. Okay, so we've got our next uh, target there has hopped over and taken shots at the Battlemaster. I didn't catch what it was. And we've got some LRM action coming in at the Battlemaster as well. The Battlemaster uh, is going to take a heck of a beating in this fight. Um, that's kind of what it's for, though. Um, it is very heavy. It has a lot of armor. So I'm kind of trying to decide what I want to do with the awesome here. Who do I want to shoot at? And the best option is that wasp down there. Took its leg off. Took the right arm and uh, right torso off as well. So it, and destroyed the engine. So it's, it's gone. No more forward scout. So the only thing that can see us now is that... Okay, it's a wolverine up there in that group of trees. There's the enemy Shadowhawk. Uh, a enemy Shadowhawk, I should say, because there will be others. There comes some more LRM action. That coming down on... Uh, Let's do this. I think that came down on Carlisle. So I was thinking about just moving up a little bit and taking a shot at that uh, Wolverine. But um, I decided against it. I, I need to keep my movement up on the Phoenix Hawk. Uh, keep that evasion up so it has less chance of taking devastating hits. Because I don't know what kind of firepower we're going to be finding here. And I just found a Crusader. Um... Now, that is a Militia Crusader, so I think the Militia actually had um, lower skill ratings. And we're taking shots at the Wolverine there. That was uh, Davis in the, uh, the Rifleman. And then we take some shots at the Shadowhawk down there on the ice. More shots coming in at the Battlemaster. Um, looked like none of that landed, which is good. Trying to figure out where do I want to position the Stalker. You would think that even for a long engagement, 480... Uh, rounds of long-range missiles would be enough. Um, but, I'm spoiler, I'm actually going to run out of LRMs before this is over. Um, 
But it'll be close. All right, so we know we've already got two lances on the field, and another lance is about to drop, and they're going to drop close. Yes, Commander. Uh, so on the next, at the end of the next round, or at the end of this round, uh, that dropship is going to come in, and they're going to drop another lance. So I need to get the Phoenix Hawk away from there. So we'll hop him back over here and take a pot shot at the fairly damaged uh, Wolverine. And here we go again with reserve, 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 reserve. Um, so, uh, that Wolverine is the primary threat right now. He's got to go. And Grayson taking some shots at it. So it's nice to see that they gave him Master Tactician. That really does make sense. A couple of shots from uh, Ali Khaled. And there's that Shadowhawk. It's uh, moved up now. Takes some shots at the Battlemaster, shaving a little bit more armor off. Thankfully the autocannon missed. And something has moved up and has sensor locked the awesome. Lori moving over to take some shots at the Wolverine now. Scoring some critical damage. That, it should have been knocked down there. I really feel that it, that it should have been knocked down. Again, sensor locking the visible target. Um, but that time, I'm okay with it because it had a lot of evasion. Here comes that enemy Crusader, and it lays into uh, Davis McCall and his rifleman. Which is called the Bannock Burn by the way. And we've got some more long-range missile action against the Battlemaster. Got some light hits. Nothing major. But you can see that uh, that armor is starting to show some wear. we got another uh, scout there in the form of a wasp. And that wasp just lost an arm. good. That Wolverine is going to move now, but he's not going to move very far. He's not got a lot of options on where to go. But he still wants to be in the fight. Take some pot shots at the awesome. Not really much effect there. Here comes some more LRMs on the Battlemaster. Shaving a little bit more armor off. Yes, Commander. So we're going to move the Battlemaster up, up the hill and up on up next to this frozen lake. And we're going to continue to lay shots into the Wolverine in, in, in an attempt to eliminate it. Taking a lot of its jump capability away, uh, and he pops. He punched out. Probably a wise move. Friendly Wolverine jumps over and sensor locks the Crusader. Which is actually not a bad idea. I, I talked I talked it down um, at the time. I was kind of frustrated. Why don't you just shoot at the dang thing? But it did have... Um, uh, it did have some evasion. Uh, so it was nice to have that taken off so that all of those LRMs could lay into the front of it. Um, and I think most of those hit that and getting all those shots in from uh, McCall there and knocking the Crusader down. Um, I, don't, I don't think that it would have gotten knocked down if it hadn't been for the sensor lock. So the sensor lock was actually a good thing. So there's the uh, there's the third lance added to the enemy forces. It's a new round. i got to figure out where do I want to move the Phoenix Hawk. He's going to oh, jump hi. him over here. And he's going to take a large laser shot at the uh, down Crusader. Target. And he missed. 84% chance to hit a prone mech. And he misses. Uh, Grayson taking some shots at that guy out on the ice. I really wish that he had taken shots 
at the Crusader instead of that Shadowhawk. Um, the Crusader is a bigger threat. So I'm a little upset with the AI on, the AI on that. Uh, one of the new reinforcements has come in and sensor locked the uh, Battlemaster because it's the biggest, heaviest, most armored thing on the field, so it makes sense for them to kind of try to focus it. But the enemy is spreading its fire um, pretty well. So there we go, we got some more shots into the downed Crusader, which is good. Speaking of Crusaders, bunch of LRM shots into the Crusader then. So he easily could have focused his fire on the Shadowhawk down there on the ice, but instead he fired across the field at the downed Crusader, which I think was the better option. That Shadowhawk will be taken care of in due time. Uh, but first he's going to shave some more armor off of the Battlemaster. It is really starting to show some wear. Um, so we've got a Griffin now positioned up high. More shots into the Crusader. It's really starting to feel it. Leg the Wasp. So that was that was good shooting. Would have been better if it had taken him out altogether, but we'll take it. There it goes. Koga taking him out with some direct fire from the archer. I do have to say these rounds go really fast for as many players as there are. So now they're starting to lay some fire into Lori's uh, Shadowhawk. And I've got to move the Battlemaster, so we're going to move out onto the ice, which is going to slow me down. Uh, but I can get some really good shots into the, uh, the Fallen Crusader and maybe finish it off or force him to punch out. I copy. And there he goes. Engine destroyed. One less target. So the Crusader, a very large threat, has been eliminated. The issue with Crusaders is not their armor, it's the weapons. Um, especially in a cold biome like this, um, where they can cool off more effectively. It's, uh, it's very dangerous, Commander. the amount of uh, firepower that they can bring. There's a lot of um, evasion on these guys, so that's the problem with jumpers. Um, so I, even with precision strike, I don't have good uh, good numbers on these, but I'm throwing a lot of missiles. So it's uh, what, fifty, yeah, fifty missiles. Um, so, but we got we got some good shots in there. Um, and uh, we unsteadied him so he lost his evasion so we can now lay into him um, took his left torso and arm Enemy off there Critical damage um, and here we have another drop ship that's about to drop a fourth enemy lance Commander. things are getting hot so we don't need to jump, we're just going to take a little move over here, uh, take a Go shot ahead. at the Shadowhawk and miss. 74% chance he misses. Reporting negative damage. I think his targeting computer needs to be uh, analyzed. Something's wrong. Shots out from the Wolverine, and the Shadowhawk is down. So that is one entire enemy lance destroyed. Got something moving up the hill. Ah, we have a, uh, a little scout. There. 
more shots out into Lori's uh, Shadowhawk, and I'm starting to get a little worried about her. Sensor locking the Griffin, not a bad idea. I would have rather he shot, but the uh, chances to hit were probably very low. So the sensor lock was probably not a bad idea, because the thing has a lot of evasion. Even after being shot at and sensor locked, uh, it still has three evasion. More shots into Lori's Shadowhawk. She's going to jump now out onto the ice, take a shot at the enemy stinger. She missed. Friendly Crusader moves up, and it looks like he's laying shots into the Griffin. Uh, he did score a head hit, but the injury was avoided. And he kept all his evasion. We got another missile launcher um, moving up there. Another 65-tonner. I believe that was another Crusader. But we'll find out soon. Here comes another 65-tonner up the hill. More LRMs. Everybody's really focusing. Standing by. Lori. We need to get the Battle Master up there to try to soak some of this fire. But what you'll see there is the leg is starting to show some significant wear. And I'm trying to decide who do I want to shoot at right now. Do I want to shoot the Griffin or... Um, what was that? There's a Shadowhawk on the other side, I think. So we take a shot at the Griffin. Can only fire one weapon. Uh, right now, that extended range, large laser. More shots into the Griffin, uh, slowly but surely, surely stripping its armor and its evasion. Shots from across the field from the Warhammer. We got a 75 tonner that's just showed up. More shots into the Shadowhawk, and its structure is now exposed. Lori's really taking a beating here. And now some of them are sp starting to split their fire. Ready to get it on. Position remove confirmed. the stalker up next to the frozen lake. Lay some really good uh, high fire. chance shots from the LRMs into the Griffin. Almost knocked him over. Now we're gonna. We don't have any way to follow up with the awesome, so we're just gonna run up to the lake. And uh, there they are. Fourth lance. So there are now four enemy lances uh, that have been introduced to this fight. Um, only three of which are actually on the field, and they are missing some members. Firing jump jet. Move the uh, Phoenix Hawk up. Take a shot at the Griffin, and he scores a hit. There's an enemy 20 tonner. Jumps up, takes some shots at the Griffin. Finishes knocking him down. And he is very exposed. Shadowhawk takes a jump and fires some shots as well. Pilot is starting to uh, get shook up on his morale. More shots into Lori Kalmar. She is now unsteady and has lost evasive, so she's not going to jump, she's going to just walk, fire some shots at the griffin, and he punches out. He says, I've had worse. I very much doubt that. Shots out at the enemy Shadowhawk. A decent amount of that hit but you can see the blackened area of ground around him. You can see a lot of that mist. Shots into the Battlemaster, and it is really starting to show. Not much armor left in that location. Starting to get worried about it.
shots into the enemy Shadowhawk. Crusader just moved. He didn't actually shoot anything. And we have an Orion. More shots into the Battlemaster, and the armor is starting to look very thin in some locations. It's uh it's getting it's getting nasty. And there are still a lot of enemies to go. More shots into Lori's Phoenix or uh, Shadowhawk. Yes, Commander. And here's where I make a tactical error. Um, I should have moved the Battlemaster into a place that, and that's just picking up the. Um, I didn't catch it at the time, but that's just picking up the second lance um, that started the fight, uh, which is why it shows up there at the top. Destroy additional Merrick, uh, Merrick forces. 50%. I've already taken out half of that lands. So, um, fire some shots into the Shadowhawk. Strip its right side off. Saw the connection on that one. Battlemaster does have a lot of firepower. Uh, and after this mission, it is going to get a little bit of a refit. Um, because it has some areas where it could use some improvement. We got a thunderbolt up there on top of the hill that I completely missed in all the uh, craziness. Shots out from an enemy rifleman into Lori Shadowhawk and some into the Battlemaster as well. And Lori has been knocked down. Also, some shots into. Uh, calls rifleman. Good to go. We move up onto the lake with the stalker now. And got you know we're spoiled for choice on targets, but we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna do some uh, multi-targeting. Uh, because I thought that I didn't need to launch everything into the uh, Shadowhawk, the lasers should be able to take it. So all the LRMs into the very fresh Orion, which does strip a lot of its armor off. Unfortunately, 50% of the medium lasers that I fired at the Shadowhawk missed, and the other two that did hit uh, managed to hit locations that somehow still have armor. Um, so, again, here we are, spoiled for choice on targets, and Crusher does not have multi-target. So I'm trying to decide, do I just want to finish off the Shadowhawk, or do I want to put some more fire into the Orion? Ultimately, I decide to just go for the Shadowhawk. Uh, and it turns out one shot was all it took. So, he's down, but that is that is a set of guns completely removed. We have an enemy Stinger, uh, which we saw earlier, but he fled. He takes a shot at uh, Lori laying there on the ground. I'm going to jump the Phoenix Hawk over. I'm going to try to get him into a position where he can begin to flank uh, and shoot at people's rears. For right now, he's going to put a shot into... I think I went with the Orion? Yeah. Engaging target. Uh, so, because I just... I need to get that Orion down. The Orion is um, very dangerous. It needs to go. We got one lowly guy out there on the uh, on the ice, taking pot shots at the uh, Great Death Legion Fire Lance. It's not very effective. Uh, then we have a Phoenix Hawk that shows up. So there's. Uh, Delmar Clay in the Wolverine taking shots at the enemy Stinger. He manages to miss entirely. So that felt like a waste. Friendly Shadowhawk moves to take shots at the enemy Stinger. Lands some decent hits. Enemy Thunderbolt has now moved into the open. And has taken out 
Lori Calamar in the Shadowhawk. So we are now down one. Um, we just have to ensure that at least one member of each of the two Great Death Legion lances survives. Um, the Crusader moving up and showing what it can do. Uh, eliminating the Stinger with an ammo explosion. We have an unknown mech moved up over there and it fired two PPCs. Pretty sure that ends up being a warhammer. Some shots out into the Phoenix Hawk. Uh, we have another fairly decent sized uh, enemy. Moves up, fires a lot of LRMs. I think that's a Crusader. So that'd be three Crusaders we've seen in this fight. Uh, now we have some exposed uh, internals on the Battlemaster, and at this point, the Battlemaster has three pieces of lost tech on it. It's got the uh, Star League extended range large laser. Um, and it's actually, it's got two double heat sinks on it. So what I should have done here is I should have saved myself the trouble because she's only going to be able to fire up very long range right now because I'm trying to keep her safe. I should have just had her punch out. Um, so I made, a, I made a tactical error there um, because she's really not going to contribute much more to this fight. Shots out from the Warhammer. I don't know at what. I don't know what their effectiveness was. The enemy Orion moves up, takes more shots into the Battlemaster, which if I had just moved the Battlemaster um, off the field, if I had just had her punch out, things would be a lot better. Um, it now has a lot of exposed structure. There goes the entire left side. I lost um, the weapon. Stability lost. I'm going down. And she will not eject and, uh, on her own. I, I, I'm wounded. Um, because of a, uh, a pilot quirk. I'm a little confused right now. I didn't catch at the time what it was. I'm like I thought it was a mech quirk or something that kept her from punching out. Um, Ready for orders. The thing is, I don't know with that pilot quirk, I don't know if I can order her to eject. Um, I wasn't paying attention to it, so. But she is now a prone target with a lot of exposed uh, internals. It's getting really bad. So the Orion now is really taking a beating. It's now lost an arm and a side torso. Um, Waiting for orders. And here's where I'm going to. I'm thinking about moving there and taking a shot. Um, but I, I think I'm going to realize that I've got an opportunity to get behind them. Yeah, here we are. So I'm going to jump there to the edge of the to group of trees. And I've got the potential for a back shot at the rifleman, but I've got a side shot Atomic. with all three weapons at the Orion. And I need, to, I need to strip the armor off that Orion. Like, the rifleman is a threat, but the Orion is also a threat, so need to keep working on it. Enemy Stinger, uh, leg blown off, he's falling down, he doesn't have a lot of armor left, so he's not long for this world. We have enemy movement off of to, on the big lake. Enemy Phoenix Hawk. He takes some shots at the friendly Shadowhawk over there on that side, which is really starting to take a pounding. Shots out at the enemy Thunderbolt 
from Grayson. Really wish that he had shot at uh, the Orion instead. But the Thunderbolt is a problem. More shots out at the enemy Phoenix Hawk. Enemy Stinger gets up. Uh, and I know exactly what he's going to do. He's he's coming for the... Uh, he's going to move over there and he's just going to take a shot at the Battlemaster. Um, putting himself right, right out in the open, you know, but... Uh, Friendly Crusader lays some more fire into the enemy Phoenix Hawk. fire here from, yep, that's another Crusader, and the second Shadowhawk is down now. So we have one la we have one mech down from each lance. Enemy Warhammer fires into, I think that was the Crusader. What's up, boss? Shots out into McCall's, um, Rifleman from the friendly rifleman, which actually surprised the heck out of me. Uh, so we're gonna move the stalker up, and we need to finish off this Orion. So we're gonna light, we're gonna fire everything into the Orion. That hit something good. It's a lot of damage, and we knocked him down. So he's now a very juicy target for everybody else. Call and the Battlemaster moves back, takes some shots at the enemy Orion, blows off the other side torso, and the pilot ejects. Friendly Warhammer moves up, takes some more shots at the Phoenix Hawk. Enemy Thunderbolt moves up, or moves back rather and finishes off Victor in the Battlemaster. So now all three lances have lost someone. And I am chomping at... I, I'm, I'm practically biting my fingernails over this right now. I'm really worried about Victor. Um, Warning. Armor low. It's, uh, it's not looking good. So, the awesome now. showing some wear in its center torso, and I'm really worried about that. And I'm trying to decide where I want to position myself. So we're just going to take out the Stinger. Just to take that gun off the field. And we start round 9. So we're now back to the Phoenix Hawk which is getting very warm, so I don't want him to jump. Heading out. But he is in the rear. He's going to take back shots at the enemy uh, Thunderbolt. And I, honestly, I should have aimed for one of the side torsos instead of the center torso. Because uh, I probably would have taken it off there. Did expose it as it is, so... Shunts, uh, sh shunts? Shots into the front of the Thunderbolt. Enemy Phoenix Hawk moves up. Puts some shots into Koga's Archer. Uh, we have more shots uh, from Grayson into the Thunderbolt. Long range missile shots from the Crusader into the Phoenix Hawk takes off the right torso. Um, enemy Warhammer. Enemy Crusader. They're spreading around the damage over there. It's, uh, it's getting pretty bad. Back over to this side. Shots out from Receiving. Thunderbolt, which I didn't even realize that Thunderbolt was up there. Um, so there's two Thunderbolts on the field. Need to move the Stalker into a position 
to start taking some hits um, because he still has a lot of armor and also delivering some hits and he is his he's cooked through a lot of his missiles already uh, thank God for multi-targeting because I could put ever I, I am putting everything into the Thunderbolt but I could have also easily put some shots put the LRMs into the Thunderbolt and put the lasers into the rifleman right there in front of me but uh, we need to focus things down ammo explosion on the Thunderbolt taking its uh, right torso off we get a sensor lock on the enemy warhammer which is useless he should have just shot um, more shots into McCall's rifleman um, hitting some internal structure that's one of the reasons that uh, I was motivated to sell my rifleman was the, the, the lack of armor um, big shots into the enemy thunderbolt its left torso has now been taken off um, but the pilot did not punch out I was kind of surprised at that Ali Khaled fires into the Phoenix Hawk and takes him down. That Thunderbolt has no weapons, so he's just moving up. I'm trying to decide what I want to do with the Phoenix Hawk. And uh, I make what is easily one of the riskiest decisions of this entire battle um, he's still running very hot and I'm not terribly keen on the idea of having him jump but uh, he's not been touched so I go for a death from above only a 68% chance for this to actually hit It does not. Armor holding. Shots out into the enemy crusader, stripping a lot of its armor off. Enemy warhammer moves up, takes shots at the friendly crusader. Score some hits. More shots into an enemy Thunderbolt. Takes one of its arms off. Enemy Crusader moves up, puts shots into the Warhammer, but he can weather the storm. Enemy Thunderbolt moves and scares the Jesus out of me because as soon as it activated, I thought, oh god, here goes my Phoenix Hawk, but no. He turns around and takes some more shots at the Awesome. Thinking about punching the Thunderbolt. But I'm going to take another risk here and show him my back as I get into position. And I'm going to put some precision fire into the side of this rifleman. I need to remove some more weapons from the field. And there it goes. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. McCall and the Bannockburn firing down at the enemy rifleman. His center torso is exposed. Shots out from the friendly Warhammer into the Crusader, stripping off more of its armor. And Koga and the Archer put more shots into the enemy Crusader exposing its internals on its right side I believe enemy rifleman moves puts some shots with its remaining weapons into my awesome Warning. Armor low. and as you heard there the armor is getting low we move the stalker up and he's also going to show his back to the Warning thunderbolt but we're going to put some more shots 
I'm thinking into the rifleman. And that's honestly the right choice, but look at this. We are running out of missiles, so I'm going to turn the LRMs off and just hope for center torso hits. Didn't take him out. And now the beginning of round 11. Shots out into the remaining Thunderbolt, causing him to punch out. And I love his punch out dialogue. You, you saw it. I'm not, I'm not saying it. Back to the Phoenix Hawk, and I need to jump him away from that Thunderbolt because he is in danger. And the Rifleman is down. Target eliminated. So, Time Lord 88 and the Phoenix Hawk, who I thought wasn't really going to do much shooting at all, scoring a kill. More shots into the enemy Thunderbolt. Enemy Warhammer moves up on the ice. Takes some shots at the friendly Warhammer. Stripping off more of his armor. Enemy Thunderbolt on the ridge line moves and takes shots at uh, Crusher in the awesome. Stripping off more armor. But we still haven't seen his internals. So we're just going to move over. And we're going to lay into him with everything but the small laser. Oh, it's, uh, it's hot. We're going to overheat here, but it's totally worth it. Morning. Heat exceeding recommended level. More shots into the Thunderbolt, stripping off the right torso. Ali Khaled, the Warhammer, putting shots into the enemy Crusader. The Crusader's not looking good. Crusader fires back at Koga in the Archer, stripping off more of his armor. Still nothing exposed, though. Koga moves over to the side, launches some long-range missiles over the ridgeline into the Crusader, taking off his right arm, which is going to take off a lot of his weapons. Friendly Crusader moves over into the woods, fires down with just about everything, uh, taking off the right torso and knocking down the, Crusade, the enemy Crusader. And it is, everything is getting very fast paced here. Heat Wave in the Stalker is going to move up and put shots into the enemy Thunderbolt up on the ridge line. And we're just going to open up with everything, I think. Yes. It's going to leave me with 30 LRMs. And we have destroyed the Earthworks chassis on the Thunderbolt. Moving into yet another new round, the Wolverine of Delmar Clay taking a shot with the autocannon at the Thunderbolt, but missing. Commander. Opportunity to take more shots with the Phoenix Hawk. Position I'm just going to do a little move over here. Precision strike and go for center torso, it looks like. All weapons are go. Forcing the pilot to eject. I got a little concerned when one of the shots uh, hit an armored location. Enemy Warhammer moves up, lays some shots into uh, Ali Khaled in his Warhammer. The Awesome is out of everything over here is out of position. I really don't have any lines of fire for anything. So we're just going to run up over the ridge. Uh, the Great Athlete in Command Lance has the same problem. Ammo explosion on the Crusader, so it is down, and then there was one. Enemy War Hero, which up to this point was untouched, taking its first hits and first damage. But it has the attention of everyone. It has run out of friends. Yes, Commander. In the back of my mind, I'm still concerned about uh, Victor having gone down in the uh, the Battlemaster earlier. Firing the last 30 uh -huh. missiles from the Stalker. Totally worth it. Exposing structure on the left leg and left torso. 
of the Warhammer. Clay and the war, uh, Wolverine move up and take an auto cannon shot at the uh, Warhammer, scoring a hit. We're going to jump the uh, Phoenix Hawk over here and take a precision shot at the side torso. But we're only going to be able to fire the large laser. It is a good hit. Scoring a critical on the medium laser. Grayson moves into position to be able to fire into the Warhammer, destroying the heat sink. Ali Khaled moves over, takes off the left torso of the enemy Warhammer and knocks him down. Crusher is now up, but is out of position still. Uh, in the awesome. Find a position here that on the next turn we will be able to fire if there is a next turn. But with only that Warhammer remaining and not much left on it. Shots in. Pilot is panicking. Crusader lines up for the shots. Called shots the center torso. Destroys another heat sink. And the pilot ejects, and that is it. We've eliminated all of the Merrick forces in the area. Mission successful. It was a victory, but it was a costly victory. We lost all that lost tech on the uh, on the Battlemaster, and we don't yet know what Victor's fate is. So, we get into the after action report. We net 127,000. And Victor has survived! Only injured for 55 days, Victor has survived. So, we're gonna call that a, a, we're gonna call that a total win. Yes, we lost the uh, Star League large laser. Yes, we lost the two double heat sinks. Um, but we get a lot of really good salvage out of this. And um, our our downed pilot survived. So we're gonna go through now. Um, I'm gonna pick a Phoenix Hawk part because I've already got two. I can complete one. Um, I take a Warhammer part so I can complete one of those as well. Uh, I believe I go for two Thunderbolt parts. I'm considering taking a Wasp part because I can complete one of those, but I go for the two Thunderbolt parts because I've already got one um, so I can complete a Thunderbolt and that'll sell for more two more salvage point uh, uh, spots left so go for two Crusader parts in the hopes that I get the third one and confirm I didn't even bother to look at the weapons um, did not get the third Crusader part but I did get another Griffin part which will give me three on that uh, so I'm building a Griffin a Phoenix Hawk um, a Stinger, a Thunderbolt, and a Warhammer. Um, I also netted two AC-5s, a large laser, an upgraded LRM-10, an upgraded machine gun, um, two SRM-6s, three SRM-2s, and some ammo. Um, keeping the SRM-6, selling the machine gun because I don't want, I don't want machine guns. I just don't. Uh, selling the medium lasers. Uh, the LRM-15s I'm going to keep, the LRM-10 upgraded I'm also going to keep. Uh, I can afford to get rid of the large laser, but I actually end up keeping it. Um, and uh, I, end up, I, I do, I'm talking about something, I don't remember what it is. But, oh, I just remembered that I lost the, uh, the lost tech stuff. Uh, but I get rid of those uh, AC-5s because I don't need those. So this ends up being a very um, lucrative engagement on the, the gross income uh, because I'm going to build and sell a lot of mechs. Um, but the repair cost is going to be astronomical, uh, especially when it comes to the Battlemaster because you saw there was not much left of that. There was a leg and an arm <laughs> left. So Betrayal at Helm 3, High Orbit. 
Welcome back, Commander. Congratulations on the victory. That was a fierce fight. I have Grayson on the line. It was an excellent fight, Commander. Merrick forces have been defeated, and the Library Corps is now safe. We uncovered evidence that proves Grey Death Legion's innocence, so now we are back in business. The Corps is extremely valuable. What are you going to do with it, Grayson? Actually, I'll give it away to everyone. For free. Just like that. Yes. The knowledge is too important to be exclusive to a single party. This would create a new huge imbalance of power. How will you make sure that everyone gets access to this knowledge? I've created several copies of the Library Corps and will distribute them across successor states. That's very noble of you. I'm just doing what is right. Anyway, thanks for the participation in the operation. Your reward awaits you. We have secured some of the Star League era equipment. Good luck, and see you around. Carlisle out. I have to say, Grayson surprised me. I expected him to be more selfish in regards to the Library Corps. Also, typo. I have checked one of the copies Grayson has created, and the information is precious. It'll help us to understand a lot of Star League era documents. I'm hopeful it'll bring back technology renaissance. Me as well, Yang. Maybe our paths will cross again, who knows. But now, it's time for us to move on. Build Warhammer. Sell it. Build Thunderbolt. Sell it. Build Phoenix Hawk. Sell it. Build Griffin. Uh, Griffin 1S. Sell it. Build a Stinger. Sell it. Build a Wasp. Sell it. Three million C-Bill reward. And... Star League Defense Force UAC-5. An upgraded large laser with plus 10 damage. An arm mod plus 15 melee damage. Um, an AC-5 with plus 50% crit. Medium laser with plus 50% crit. And an urban mech part. Just a part. Not even a whole mech. Just just an urban mech part. I think that's a bad roll. <laughs> that's a really bad roll. Um, but it is what it is. Now we get into... Uh, we got to get into repairs. And I'm really dreading this. Um, these repairs... Are going to be very expensive. But we now have over 16 million C bills and we came to this system with about 10 um, actually less than 10 uh, closer to 9 so I don't even want to look at the Battlemaster um, 28,000 and 2 days to fix the awesome uh, we need to do a slight refit on the Zeus because it lost 2 heat sinks um, but that's that's no problem. So we're gonna put the two heat sinks back in the leg where they go. I'm lucky that the AC5 ammo didn't explode. And that's what I was pointing out there. Um, on it. I'll let you know when that's done. A little bit of repair on the Crusader. A little over 8,000 C bills in two days. Repairs on the Warhammer. Uh, 21,650 and two days. So, a little pricey, but not bad. Still not ready to go to the, uh, the Battlemaster. The Archer. Archer took a beating. Um, so, we lost a medium laser and a heat sink. So, that's not terrible. Uh, could have been a lot worse. So, we're going to put this plus five damage one on there? No. The, yeah, the plus one accuracy is better. Um... And then replace the missing heat sink. 155,907 days. So that's kind of expensive, but the big one, this is where we really get into it. I mean, you can just look at that thing, you can see how absolutely mangled it is. We lost the Starly Defense Force uh, extended range large laser. We lost 
both double heat sinks. Uh, we lost some SRM ammo. We lost a bunch of regular heat sinks. It's a good thing I've been stocking up on those. That is a lot of red. Um, it's very painful to see that. So... lost three medium lasers we're just gonna put regular uh, medium lasers back nothing special um, as for the right arm weapon we're gonna put this plus 10 damage large laser we're gonna lose some range uh, on that but uh, the damage output will make up for that I feel um, A lot of heat sinks, so we need to fit those on. So drop a heat sink there, drop two in the leg, uh, and then the rest will just have to be regular heat sinks. And it'll take me a second to catch it, uh, but I actually need to take that heat sink, that last one, back off because I need the. SRM ammo replaced. So there, that goes down in the leg. And I'm trying to decide if I want to make some changes here uh, to the support weapons. Uh, but I think I ultimately decide that things are good as they are. I'm also thinking about putting our new auto cannon um, on that arm in place of the uh, the small lasers, um, but it's nine tons. So with the weight issues, it's just not going to happen. Um, I would have to strip so many weapons and so much equipment off of. Uh, this mech that it just it wouldn't be worth it uh, 8 tons on a regular AC5 um, it's just not going to happen so 697,675 C-bills and 26 days for this repair that is very expensive um, right. I'll get it in the schedule. so that's basically one one of the mechs that we were just able to sell um, is paying for the uh, repair costs on the Battlemaster. But, again, in the end, Victor survived. Um, so, does it suck that we lost the Star League equipment? Yeah, it sucks. It's really bad. Um, that hurts a lot. It would hurt more if I had lost a pilot. Um, that would be the worst, the worst thing uh, between the two. Um, but I, I think everything worked out. Um, I think it's fine. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to say. Um, I uh, loaded up my um, my outro at this point. So, since this is a recording of the outro, I will uh, I'll go ahead and go into that right now um, a little bit modified uh, thank you for joining me today um, this is just the part that's going up on YouTube so um, if you like what you've seen consider following my stream on Twitch um, so you, you can get updates and notifications of when I go live 
Uh, also remember that all of my streams are kept on Twitch as VODs for a week as well as, as you can see here, uploaded and record, or recorded and uploaded uh, to YouTube. Um, if you want to see future live streams, I'm on Twitch every day, 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, um, with the exception of every other Friday, um, but this Friday I'll be on. Um, also remember I have a community Discord server permanent link uh, to which is in the About section um, on both YouTube and Twitch. If you're feeling generous and want to help support the channel or stream, consider donating to my Patreon, the link to which can also be found in those about sections and in the upper right hand corner of today's video. Uh, if you like my content and you think others will too, feel free to share it. More views will help me to reach affiliate status on Twitch. Or, sorry, no, I already have affiliate status on Twitch. That's old. That's not even in the script anymore. <laughs> um, but more views do help. Um, so anything that helps the, the channel grow. Um, is greatly appreciated. Um, you can also consider maybe subscribing to my Twitch uh, channel. That also helps out a lot. Um, at any rate, I hope that you enjoyed the videos today. Um, if you did, um, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Um, if you like the videos, hit the like button. It helps with the uh, YouTube algorithm so that they come up more often in recommended videos. And uh, also hit the bell to be notified of when new content goes up. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the, the videos today, and I hope to see you again soon. Until then, take care, stay safe, and have a wonderful day. Uh, goodbye. Actually, there's a little bit extra here still going on. So I was rambling on about something. I don't know what it was. Um, there's still another three minutes? Good God. <laughs> um, so yeah, all five parts of this will be uh, going up soon. I don't know why I'm telling you that, because by the time you see this, they'll be up. Yeah, um, wasn't really comfortable with having to put off the uploads, but uh, it is what it is. So, oh, um, after I did this, I also um, once I went went off the air, um, I also jumped into. I went all the way down um, to the rimward periphery and uh, I went down to the very 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 farthest uh, bottom end of the map to hit that um, of unknown origin flashpoint and I did that and it's been interesting there are two more parts to that flashpoint that are coming up later on and I did not record any of it and I don't plan to um, but it's something that I might get around to doing again uh, on a different playthrough, maybe, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know how much of this playthrough I'm going to continue to show on the stream, but it's been fun. Um, it's just really disappointing that I didn't get the Marauder 2 that I was uh, working so hard to get, um, but I have found out that the Flashpoint campaign that I'm doing now uh, will lead to a very nice mech, so not too worried about missing out on the Marauder. Um, it's a 95 tonner, uh, the reward for this campaign, it's a 95 tonner. Uh, it is a modified version of a bull shark. Um, so really looking forward to getting that. Anyway, uh, I think I'm about to finish up. Yep, there it goes. So, see ya! My mic was muted that whole time? Oh my god. Okay, I know how to fix it. It's just this part's going to go uh, take a little longer to go up. It'll go up tomorrow. So, see ya.